Welcome back to Venite a Mangiare. I'm Allegra and today I am very excited because I'm going to be showing you how to make homemade pasta from scratch as well as a homemade tomato pomodoro sauce. This is the exact same recipe that I learned when I was little from my Nona. I am very excited to show you a little bit more about my heritage, things that I grew up learning how to make, and hopefully it's something that you can try for yourself at home and make with your family. So right off the bat, I'll say that I do not make this often. Making pasta from scratch is very time consuming and it's, it does take up a large portion of your day. It's something that, you know, if you're home, if you're stuck at home during, you know, coronavirus, you're trying to stay safe, this is a great activity if you have some kiddos at home or if you're having a date night with your significant other. So I'm gonna start with the tomato sauce because um, I, you know, I'm, to be honest, I don't know if there's any science to back this up, but from my experiences, from my family's experiences, the longer that tomato sauce sits and cooks on low for a while, then just the better the taste, the more, the richer the tomatoes. So, um, yeah. First, I wanna go over a few of the ingredients that I typically use for a tomato sauce. So, to be honest, Nona, like, every year she gets bushels of tomatoes and she, jars and cans them and we have our own tomato sauce that our family uses throughout the year and that's typically what I use but I know that almost everyone does not have access to a Nona and her sauce so when I've been away at college and during my internship when I didn't have access to Nona sauce I have found that San Marzano style tomatoes are a great second place alternative. I really like the Delalo brand it's just like a San Marzano style are, they're just a longer tomato. They're more, I don't know, their taste is more like of a richer tomato. Um, I don't feel like they're as acidic. So um, really good, would highly recommend this if you're going to make tomato sauce. Typically people feel that they need to kind of add sweetness to a sauce just to kind of offset the acidity from the tomatoes. Fair point, that's true. Um, I've seen a lot of people use carrots or sugar. Um, I know, you know, sugar is more common, I feel like, in the Italian community, I would say. What my family does is we use like a yellow onion. There's, you know, it's not typically known for its sweetness, but it does add a lot of sweetness. And if you're using like a low, like I feel like another thing with these San Marzano style, they're not as acidic as other canned tomatoes. So you don't really need to offset that acidity as much. So these, a yellow onion perfectly does a job of adding sweetness to the sauce without going too crazy. All right, moving on to spices. Keep it simple. Italian cuisine is honestly, it's known for just being very simple. A lot of the food that my Nona made and that um, or my family just has grown up on is just very simple. It uses very minimal ingredients. It's peasant food. So literally the only spices that we ever use is salt, pepper, a bay leaf just for while you're cooking the sauce and you remove it right before you're about to serve it. And then Nona and I both like to add some red pepper flakes because we like a little bit of spice. So a little picante is good. All right, so let's get started with the sauce. And I'm just gonna start by dicing up an onion. gonna give this okay I'm just gonna give this a rough chop all right and that's all set to go okay so to start off I'm gonna just turn my burner on to um, like a low medium heat I'm just gonna put in about like a tablespoon of olive oil I'm just gonna let that heat up really quick just so that it's um, warm enough to kind of 
cook the onions a little bit and melt them. Okay, so I'm feeling a little bit of heat off of here. So I'm gonna really quickly just put in those diced onions. Oh. So the goal here is just to cook them until they're a little bit golden brown around the edges of the onion. As Nona would say, that's the onions are melting. You could smell this house right now. It is amazing. Okay, so this looks pretty good right now. Um, see if I can zoom in a little bit. Oh. All right. Not sure if you can see that super well, but if you kind of see there, um, the onions are very translucent right now. So that just kind of goes to show that they are cooked and they will melt in the sauce once we do put the tomatoes in. We are looking good. So next we're going to put in some tomato paste and we're just gonna put a whole can in there and stir that up. So next ingredient we have are the San Marzano tomatoes. Um, again, these are crushed. They are excellent. They taste um, super tomato-y and um, they're perfect to make a nice pomodoro sauce. Oh boy. All right, and I'm just gonna put the entire jar in. This is 28 ounces in total. Pop a splatter. Good job, Allegra. I'm just gonna add some water. Um, it's really how much water you add is kind of to your preference. Um, if you like kind of more of a chunkier, um, really like to me, this is too chunky, but if you like a chunkier sauce, you can add just a little bit of water. I like it kind of just like a nice marinara sauce. So, um, I'm not exactly sure how much water I'm going to put in there, but I'll go ahead and measure it to see how much, um, I do end up putting in. Okay, so I would say this is probably perfect. This is exactly how you want it. Keep in mind that as it continues to cook, some of the water will evaporate um, in the steam. So um, it will get a little bit less runny than this, but I would say this is probably perfect. And if it does, if it gets too thick, you can always add water as needed. So, but for right now, I think this is really good. All right, so next up, we're gonna put our spices. So I got a little bit of sea salt. I would say it's really to taste. So I'd probably recommend about, mm, say like two tables, no, not tablespoons, teaspoons. Maybe, maybe even a tablespoon at most. Start, start light and then work your, you can taste it as it's cooking. And if it tastes too salty, add a little bit more water. If it's not salty enough, add some more salt but I definitely recommend starting with little salt and adding more. And then kind of the same thing for the pepper. I really like pepper, so I'll probably put in like, I don't know, probably closer to a tablespoon. We're gonna put in one bay leaf, and it's very important that you remember to remove this before you serve the sauce. Um, I'm pretty sure like a full one of these is toxic or something. Don't quote me on that, I will look that up, but I know you should not eat one of these. <laughs> All right, and then Red pepper flakes are totally optional. Um, if you're not a spicy person, you don't have to add them. Even if you're not, like just adding like a few gives it a really nice kind of spice, I think. But I am a spicy person. So I'm gonna add, I don't wanna make this like an arrabbiata sauce where it's like, it's gonna burn your face off, but I think that's good. Like maybe a half teaspoon. And yeah, so then we just let this set. We're gonna put it on to low heat. I'm gonna get a lid for this and then we're gonna let it sit for like a few hours and just let it cook, let the house smell amazing. And in the meantime, we can make our pasta. Okay, so for the pasta, I'm going to be demonstrating two ways to make the pasta. First will be with the actual pasta maker machine. And the second, because I know that the majority of households probably don't have a pasta maker. Um, it's not a common kitchen appliance, I would say. Um, I'll show you how to make a pasta just from hand. Um, this is our pasta maker. I think we've had it in the family since before I was even born. Um, I think it's from Italy. Gourmet 
gourmet high mark kitchen so it's probably it's not probably middle. but i don't know it's it's a good it's a good machine okay so when nona makes her pasta to be honest she doesn't measure anything really so a lot of what i've learned from her has just been from just kind of appearance and what looks good so um but i did bring a measuring cup so hopefully i can kind of give a good range as to what um, the appropriate portions are so For your pasta base, um, just like an all-purpose white flour is fine. Um, if you want to go fancy, like a semolina flour is probably preferred. Um, but I know it's not always, always the easiest thing to find, so just a plain, simple, all-purpose flour works perfect and can still make a really great pasta. Um, so that's what I'll use today. Also, I should say, some people make their pasta in a bowl. Um, that's fine. Nona always taught me to just make it on the counter, get just get messy and make it. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. I've sanitized and cleaned this counter. Make sure if you do it on the counter too that you do the same thing. Stay healthy and clean. One cup, two cups. Okay, so this is about two and a half to two and three quarters cup of flour. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, actually, first I feel like I should pull my hair up the proper food safety protocol. The next thing I'm going to do is make just like a little well in the center of the flour. Enough to kind of, so you have enough space for about like, so you can put four eggs in there. And I'll kind of zoom in so you can see. Okay, and then we're gonna keep the flour out because you're definitely need some more to roll the pasta later on. So keep that close by. Next, we're going to crack about four eggs into the well here, so. Okay, so next I'm gonna do is, uh-oh, we got a little bit of a explosion. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of whisk up these eggs and make it into a dough. Once you've kind of got your eggs whisked together, then I usually just use my hands because I find it a lot easier um, just to kind of make a better forming dough. Okay, so this dough is a little bit dry right now, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. Okay, so this is about how it should look. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna clean up this mess wrap this in plastic wrap and let it sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes. Again, update on the sauce. Ooh, it's smelling so good in here. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes, so now we're going to take our dough and make it into some pasta. So I'm gonna start off with the pasta maker. Um, what I'm gonna do first is divide our dough. We'll save that half for the by hand half, and we'll do this part for the actual pasta maker. What we're going to do is we're just going to kind of lightly dust them just so it doesn't stick when we put it through the machine. I'm going to start on the, uh -oh, the like widest setting and then we're gonna slowly work it down to get it really, really super thin um, and then get it into a noodle shape. So I'm just gonna push it through. As you kind of put it through the machine, um, I always think it's just a good idea to kind of continue to flour um, the pasta just so, again, it doesn't stick. If you ever want to get fancy with this, you can always put in some herbs or spices into the dough and make it kind of a, um, I don't know, a special flavored pasta dough. So those are done going through the machine. I got up to the sixth setting. Um, I'm not gonna go any further than that because I think this is a pretty decent thickness for pasta. I don't, I think if it goes any thinner, it does, it's just gonna like, dissolve and not taste good. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, so I'm gonna do this second dough ball and then um, after that, you can put it in and make the pasta noodles. Okay, so I wanna show you guys really quick kind of what I got. 
set up here before we go on to actually shaping the noodles. I just have some towels laid out and what we're gonna do after we do shape these noodles, oh my gosh, after we do shape these noodles, we're going to let them sit and like dry for about 30 minutes. And so I wanna have some space just kind of set out so that we're able to do that effectively. So now we're over here. I'm going to change um, the setting and I'm gonna make a fettuccine. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our Latin dough and just put it through the machine and crank them out and we'll have some pasta. So now we're gonna take the rest of our dough and we are just going to flatten this out as flat as probably we can possibly get it. So you can use like whatever you basically have on hand, I guess like a rolling pin, old wine bottle or whatever, whatever works for you, whatever you have on hand. So while you're shaping this, you want to make sure that you're kind of shaping it into um, like a long rectangle, kind of similar to how we made it with the actual pasta maker. This is just to make it easier for cutting. Okay, so this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Maybe it could be a little bit thinner, but I think it'll be okay. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna fold this up into probably like, I don't know, however you wanna, just so it's about, it's about like three inches thick. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're going to take our little pasta dough and we're gonna cut it into like little strips. Um, the thinner probably, you know, whatever kind of thickness you want your noodle to be, that's how thick you should cut it. So I'm just gonna cut it probably like, I don't know, quarter to like an eighth of an inch strips. As you unfold it, um, you get a nice pasta noodle. And those look pretty similar to the fettuccine that we made with the pasta maker. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you the final product. So these are the noodles that we made with the machine. As you can see, they are pretty uniform. They all have pretty similar um, shape and texture. Um, they look awesome. These are the ones that we made by hand. Um, they're a little bit thicker, um, a little bit less uniform. As you can see, like this one here, um, kind of changes in shape. They're a little bit thicker overall, so I don't know if you can tell, but like, that's the one we made by hand, and this is the one that we made by the machine. But overall, they look really great. They're all gonna taste really awesome. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna let them sit for about 30 minutes just so they can dry, and then we can either store them or we'll cook some up so we can make some pasta. Okay, so water is boiling, and we're gonna put the pasta in there. Because we made it homemade, it really only needs to cook for about like, three minutes, and then we can take it out, strain it, and pair it with the sauce. But first, I think it's important, always, always, always salt your water. This gives the pasta a little bit of flavor. Always, always salt your water, and do not, I repeat, do not use olive oil in your water. Your sauce is just gonna slip right off, and it's gonna be not, not super good. We're gonna cook these for about three minutes to make them nice and al dente, which means two to two. So, it's got a little bit of a crunch, but it's, it's also soft, but it's not mushy. So, so let's go. Okay, so while we're letting that cook, I um, wanted to go over some housekeeping with the pasta. So the fresh pasta can last around three days in the fridge, or it can last up to like, probably like three months in the freezer. So if you're not planning on cooking it right away, would definitely recommend freezing it. From there, you can just put it in the water, cook it until it's nice and al dente, and you're all set. Before we pair it with the sauce, we have to make sure to take the bay leaf out, so. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. This is just a reminder that this video is for educational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. You should always consult your doctor if you do have any concerns for your health.
If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell for some notifications whenever I post a video. If you wanna make this recipe, remember there's a full copy of the recipe in the description below. And if you have any interesting nutrition topics or any recipes you wanna see me make on this channel, be sure to drop a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks again for watching.